Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and this is the third and final installment in our field deployable repeater series. And this one, we're going to interface the receiver. We're going to build all the repeater cables. We're going to uh, build a new power cable. We're going to put everything together and test it out. So let's get cracking. This is a Motorola MCS2000 UHF radio. This is what we're going to use as our receiver, and we're also going to use one as a transmitter, as you've seen. Um, for our receiver, we're going to go ahead and interface it in the rear on this DB25 connector here. This is your RF connector, this is your DC connector, and this is your microphone connector where we're going to connect our uh, transmitter uh, on the transmitter, not on the receiver. And the information we get for this radio, we're going to get out of my book of moto here. And let's see here. Okay, here's the MCS 2000 installation manual. And let's see here. Oh, here we go. 2000 series radios right here. The pins for the receiver we're going to use are going to be IO5, which is pin 8, which is essentially, this is going to be our carrier-operated squelch line. It's set in the uh, CPS, or RSS, is a car radio mute. And uh, what you do is you turn the, uh, I'm going to turn the uh, delay down to like one second, which is the minimal one. I tried to do zero and it wouldn't work. I'm going to show you that. Uh, 10, which is our ground. And 11, which is our receive audio, which is the filtered audio, which is what we're going to use for the uh, repeater audio. Let's get cracking. Okay, here's a little tech tip for everybody. Um, these little small DB25 connectors here, I'm trying to see if this will focus on for you. They're designed to be put on with a set of crimpers. Um, I don't have a set of the crimpers, so, and I've never bought a set of them because they're rather expensive. So what I've always done is I've always clamped them down with a small set of needle nose, such as this, and then soldered them together, and they've always worked out well. And um, just make sure that you put your back wings onto your insulation. They're designed to do that, and I don't know if you guys can see that or not. When they're crept together, it really bites down on the wire really good. Okay, we're going to test our core pin here and see what happens. When you transmit, the voltage drops. And it does look like it holds for about a second. Okay, and here's my repeater interface cable that I put together. The interface is the uh, transmitter and receiver, both MCS 2000s to the... Um, ICS basic repeater controller. Uh, uses the DB9. I constructed at a shielded cable. Uh, this is the power input on this side here. And I've got that set up to where it goes into my power cable. And my power cable just merely plugs into this right here. And that provides power for the repeater controller, for the fans, and an accessory connector right here. If I need that for, uh, if I want to do emergency battery switch power or hook another 12 volt accessory to it. This just goes in the base of the radio as I showed and then this goes in the uh, front mic port of the MCS 2000. I wanted to show you guys I went ahead and I did a pin out for everybody so see if I can show everybody here how I put this together. We'll go ahead and start here. This is on the back side of the uh, ICS controller where you got pin 1, and this is the rear of the DB9. Uh, grounds pin 1, battery positive or 13.8 DCs. 2, this is your push to talk output, transmitter audio out, receive audio in, and receive carrier operated squelch in, which basically it controls the uh, closure of the push to talk circuit. Uh, there is an option to use a control receiver for this controller so what you can do is is you can tie in another receiver it doesn't really pass audio but what it does is it allows you to 
it allows you to uh, program the repeater with DTMF and it has priority over the uh, receiver. It's not necessary to use it, uh, but I did put that on there. Like uh, pin 4 is control receive audio in, pin 7 is control receive carry operated squelch, and then 9 is for an optional CTCSS board if you wanted to add one to it. I just used the uh, selective signaling and the radio itself. On the DB25 of the MCS2000, we're not going to go through the bottom pins. We didn't need any of them. Uh, 1 and 2 is internally jumper to run the speaker. If you don't want the, the uh, local speaker to be active, just remove that jumper. 4 and 9 is your emergency jumper. Um, just leave that in place. Pin 8 is where I picked up my uh, carrier-operated squelch, which is at, at idle. It's about 5 volts, and when you transmit or when it's receiving a signal rather, it drops down to uh, like 0.6 tenths of a volt. Uh, number 10 is where I got my ground and 11 is where I got the receiver audio. And then this is on the MCS2000 transmitter going in the mic port. This is the way Motorola lays theirs out. If you look at an RJ45 schematic it's backwards uh, or a pinout. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with this one here. 4 is going to hook to your ground. All your grounds are going to get tied together to pin 1. Uh, five is your mic audio, and six is your push to talk. And for those of you that use the uh, PowerWorks connectors, uh, I like these things a lot. They're little mini Anderson connectors. I used to get them uh, back for RC stuff from a hobby shop, and I. And I used to get them from like Tower Hobbies, and they're pretty inexpensive. Their power work sells them pretty reasonable too. So uh, either way you choose to obtain them is good. But uh, they do sell a crimping tool, and uh, I think the crimping tools, like their economy crimpers, like fifteen dollars. Um, I use one of these right here. It's the uh, one of those Gardner Bender crimpers, the GS388, and uh, these are like seven dollars on Amazon. So. And they're multifunctional. They'll do the uh, insulated, non-insulated terminals, and they do a really good job. This is a throwdown. And if you don't have your ratchet crimpers, if you want a set of crimpers to throw in a lightweight tool bag instead of your big technician bag. Um, and these things do a really good job on these right here. You just use a small side, squeeze it down. You can dress it up. It's not perfect. you can see they do a pretty good job of uh, crimping these ends on here they're not going anywhere I'll flood them with solder anyway uh, because that's just what I do while I've got my soldering iron out but if you had to make a field repair or something like that and you didn't have your ratcheting crimpers the, these things will work for you All right this is the old power harness that I had in the repeater when I had max tracks in it and uh, it's not too bad. I, I basically took the fuse holder out of the back of the power supply and I plugged it in here with spade connectors so I could break it out from here and then added this right here to it. So I've since rebuilt this with less wire so I don't have to bundle it up and I mean, space is limited inside of this little cabinet. So I'm going to keep this because that will be useful for other projects. This right here I'm going to scavenge this uh, little Anderson connector off of here for uh, another harness I'm going to build which is a way to uh, splice in a, a, a battery backup into this uh, repeater system here. And this is the new one I built right here which I just took the fuse holder and I put a uh, set of power poles at the uh, power supply end and I've got the uh, it broke out from a power pole here. I had to basically cut it back the housing itself in order to get the wiring to fit in there so I heat shrunk it underneath here and then that then braided the uh, Molex connector here to uh, break out my accessory connector to power the uh, repeater controller and uh, uh, an accessory circuit so and the fans so that right there will uh, take care of all those functions for me and uh, like I said we still have a fuse in there too for protection so that'll trying to zoom out here this will sit in the back of it like that right there and you'll see this will sit on top of the power supply and fit in here so there's a new power harness 
Okay, here's our RF cables here. They're um, I make them out of RG223, which is a, a dual shielded, a uh, little bit bigger than 58 size cable. It's got a silver center conductor, silver shield. Uh, it duplex as well, and it's a uh, I had these as jumpers already, so. Uh, I had one that already had a, a mini UHF on it, and then um, one I ended up having to put a new one on it. But uh, I peat shrink them up when I get done after I crump them together, and uh, we'll put this thing together now. Okay, we're ready to put this thing together here. You can see I've already mounted the controller. I used some Velcro right here, and uh, to get it in and out, I just basically stick a straight edge through here and and separate the velcro and I could slide it out. Uh, once it's in there it's already set up. Uh, I've got it running in operator mode now. I've already set the controller up. So I've already popped in my receiver connector here. So you fish all these wires back through the back here. slide in our receiver okay it's even all right turn it back around here and we'll go ahead and put in our power connector see our power connector set up here or I can plug in the send of it like that there These are our power ends here. One will go here and one for the receiver. Plug those in there. Dress that up there. Go ahead and plug in our controller at the back, DB9, all right, chase through our transmitter cable, take our power, chase our receiver cable all up on the other side. And put our power connector up here for our controller. Plug that in. We're set with that. Take our RF cables here. Up in our duplexer. And our receiver here. Transmitter on this side. Transmitter in here on the front. Chase this down under here. There we go. That holds that right there real good. Alrighty. Turn volume down the transmitter. Leave that on there. Actually, we can turn that down too. Turn around. 
on, grab our AC connector machine cord, plug it in. And we're lit up. Looks like we got a problem with our computer controller. And we are good to go to test. Okay, now we're all tied in here. We got power and everything. We hooked it to our dummy load. Test five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five. And let's see if our DTMF works. Yep, works good. Test five four three two one one two three four five. Okay, now it's time to go hook it to an antenna, take a drive around, and see how well it works. Okay, I just put it on the service monitor to make sure everything was good before I put it on a live on the air test, and I set the thing up for high power and low power. Uh, low power is 4.9 watts, high power is 19 watts, so I can control that with that button right there. Uh, 4.9 watts is probably plenty for most applications as long as I you know, put the thing in a good location with a good antenna. And uh, I did put some loom around the outside of the uh, transmit cable, and the reason why I did that is, is it's kind of this corner here kind of sharp so I didn't want to abrade the outer jacket of it so I'd rather abrade the loom and this holds it in position so when I take the repeater offline or the transmitter offline I can just do it like that and it stays in place and won't flop all over the place okay I've concluded operational testing of it and it's working fantastic I put on a service monitor it's on frequency uh, deviations good so everything's dialed in uh, even with a dummy load, it was covering, you know, you know, my block. Uh, but I put it on the air on the antenna and uh, drove several miles in either direction. It was working fantastic. So I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this and learned something. And thank you for uh, spending your time with me here while I work on this. And uh, I hope it helps somebody. And uh, this is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.